A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. As it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast, and one of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded, astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with them went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while they were with him at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found together together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Father Francis with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. I think the camera's right over there. So I'm going to have to kind of, I got a new, uh, got a new toy. Of course, unfortunately, that's just not working the way I want it to. Oh, all my technology stuff. Yes, I know. And I hope that's not showing up in the video. Anyway, so uh, today I wanted to, I want to, well, I want to talk about the, the wonderful readings that we celebrate uh, on this third Sunday in Easter. It's hard to believe. <laughs> it's also hard to believe if you're looking behind me there. Yeah, that's snow. That's still snow. Uh, it is, uh, well, at the, t at the time of this recording, I think it's the uh, 17th, is it? Got to get my glasses. The older I get, the weaker my eyes are. Um, well, what is, what's going on with that? Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the 18th. Okay, so Tuesday the 18th, I'm making this video. Um, so, hope you're doing well. Um, hope So far, you're having a most blessed Easter and Pascha. Uh, Christ is risen. Truly, he's risen. Alleluia. Yes. Um, so, I wanted to talk to you about um, some things that I think are part of the concerns that we all have, you know, um, but how it ties in with this wonderful appearance of Cleopas and his companion and how Jesus uh, comes to them kind of unexpected and, but in the midst of their um, and again, I want to talk probably a little bit more about trauma, maybe. Um, again, I, I've been kind of motivated and inspired uh, by Dr. Anthony Covey. Now, Dr. he's Anthony I don't even know Cave. if he's even a Christian Fear, or not. And unscripted. You know, it's funny. I would say by his demeanor and his, um, his, the warmth of his caring personality that he must be some kind of a person of faith. I don't know. He doesn't seem to talk about 
things from a faith perspective, but that could also be because of the uh, environment that he lives and works in. So maybe, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, not politically expedient for him to say anything that might possibly get him in trouble. But at the same time, uh, I've never heard him say, and I've watched a lot of his videos, um, he does seem to be a very, very compassionate, uh, good-hearted, extremely knowledgeable person and uh, a, a really good person. That's all I can say. And uh, so I'll talk more a little bit more about that. But as I make this video, there is just so many uh, concerns that we have uh, going on in the first quarter of the of uh, the year 2023. You know, it's uh, it's uh, what is it April now? So it's uh, we're kind of in the the last part of the first quarter, I guess, of the of the new year. The first quarter is just about over with, and. And so before you know it, <laughs> believe it or not, it's winter, winter is, uh, is, is on its way out, folks. We just had some snow, though, last night and, and early this morning. But, uh, but we just take it one day at a time. But believe it or not, spring is here. It's just taking a little while for it to kind of fully manifest itself. But we're concerned, you know. Now, a lot of these concerns are pretty serious concerns. Um, you know, look at the violence that's going on in places like Chicago. Um, I don't even pretend to try to say what, how do I, how do I even, how do we make sense out of this, the, these riotous mobs attacking innocent people, uh, going into stores and looting, just, you know, complete lawlessness. What's happening to our society? That's not bad enough. You know, you kind of think about things like, well, what's going on in, in Ukraine and the possibility of, you know, maybe World War III, nuclear annihilation. I mean, horrific things to, to be concerned about. Um, then there's the, um, you know, the goofiness that seems to be... Uh, associated with a, a little more lighthearted, but still, but still at the root, a, a concern with this whole um, transgender radical uh, indoctrination that we find happening in our schools and our society as a whole. You know, the whole Bud Light, you know, Dylan Mulvaney uh, controversy and, you know, just people, you know, kind of endorsing this new woke agenda um, you know, then there's the, uh, whole concern that, uh, a lot of people are now having about this new AI, artificial intelligence, uh, possibly being something very, uh, serious indeed. You know, I saw an interview with Elon Musk uh, the other day and, you know, he, he was one of the originators uh, or inventors of AI, open AI. And now he is sounding some alarm saying, you know what, <laughs> folks, we need to be extremely careful with this. Now, this is more than just now when I was about, what, 20 some odd years ago, we were worried about Y2K. You know, we were thinking, oh, gosh, you know, when the computers turn over for the new century, just maybe they might uh, go haywire. You know, we don't know what the computers are going to do. We just, we weren't, we weren't hundred percent sure. And we thought, gosh, maybe airlines would fall out of the sky because the, 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 um, the computerized and, um, navigation systems might shut down, uh, abruptly, you know, other, other, um, things like electrical grids might automatically just shut down and not turn back on. And, you know, people will be in the dark and they'll be in the cold and, you know, all these fearful things. And fortunately, nothing catastrophic happened. But but AI might be just a little bit more, uh, a little more complicated, a little more sophisticated. Um, and it's uh, when you look into it, it it can. And the problem with AI, and I think I said this in a video a couple of weeks ago, is simply that right now, instead of it being truly open, um, you know, being an open source kind of a thing where it basically takes in just basic information you know, two plus two equals four and all that kind of stuff. It's being generated or trained uh, with, unfortunately, a lot of woke uh, type agenda things. You know, they'll say things like, you know, 
uh, one political candidate is evil and bad, you know, they're fascists, they're Nazis and stuff. And then unfortunately that gets literally programmed or you know, the, the machine learning gets trained and then they begin to, then they begin to select or deselect information based upon a, a bias. So instead of it being, you know, truly objective um, and un, uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, being uh, a victim of, say, um, uh, subjectivism, but being objective, uh, an objective source, it, it has been uh, literally even, it's already to some extent already been pre-programmed to uh, accept some things as true and, and reject other things and even uh, cancel things. So there's not a real uh, objective balance in the AI. It's already being biased, heavily biased by, unfortunately, uh, people who have an agenda and know that eventually that this thing does take over, uh, <laughs> over the human, human race, uh, it will be already it may be already too late. And, and listening to Elon Musk talking to Tucker Carlson a couple of nights ago, I, I have to be honest, I'll give you my impression. It seemed like he was already uh, panicking because it was like uh, he kind of knows maybe more than we do, and it may already be too late. Now, again, that's a scary thing, a very scary thing. So again, all these things that uh, we can... Um, we can sit there and we can feel like, well, you know, I'm, I don't have any control over this. And, um, you know, all these external forces that seem to be uh, controlling our, our world or in our, ultimately our own individual lives. Again, it, it is a concerning thing. And I would just say uh, one of the reasons why, and I want to go back to just talking about positive people uh, who I think can and do make a, a positive difference in life. Um, and I, and I got to say, I, I mean, yes, I, I, I mean, we do. I, I'm, I'm blessed to have, you know, good people uh, that I am surrounded with and good people that I think uh, are truly um, helpful people and their background. Um, so anyway, um, but you see good people who really do want to make a difference in the world and they make a positive difference. And, and those are the people I think, and maybe you would agree, that are, are people that um, you really find um, encouraging and inspiring. It's like, wow, why can't more people be like this person? Uh, somebody who's really trying to be helpful, somebody who's knowledgeable, somebody who uh, is competent, somebody who's compassionate, uh, somebody that really, really uh, is, it seems like a really genuine human being uh, and really is trying to do the best they can to help other people. And, 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 and whether it's in medicine or uh, whether it's hopefully, you know, some people even our church, instead of trying to destroy the church and trying to re rewrite the church and, and uh, kind of lead people down a false gospel path, you know, really trying to embrace um, the true authentic gospel and encourage other people to do the same. And that's why I, I like this uh, story from Cleopas. You, you see these, uh, these, these uh, disciples, they weren't maybe the, the original 12, but they clearly were disciples. Um, and, you know, as, as they were like different, you know, layers or, or circles of, you know, you have the, the inner circle and you have the little bit outer circle and you have a little bit more of a outer circle. And so in many ways, they probably, they, they could have been, you know, some of those five, five, first 500 uh, d disciples that were, you know, uh, following Jesus, uh, maybe not all the way, but following him from time to time. And certainly uh, had a lot of hope that he was going to be the one that was going to, as we hear in their discourse, the one to, to liberate Israel. Now, the, the thing that I think is interesting is that, you know, they, for whatever reason, they did not understand fully. And even, even when Jesus revealed himself in the breaking of the bread and the, and the opening of the scriptures, they still, even Jesus says, you're, you're so slow to understand. And I think that's the way it is with a lot of us. We, we look at things kind of, um, can't, we can't see the forest through the trees because we're, we're right in the middle of everything. And, and sometimes it's very discouraging. You look at what's happening 
uh, in the church today. And it's just absolute, it's almost like, I was thinking about this, it's almost like the wild, wild west. Um, all of the, 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 the things that used to contain the deposit of faith, a lot of our um, hierarchy, have they've kind of abandoned those things. You know, it's kind of like the Wild West. You know, you get to make it up any way you want to, folks. You know, all those old traditions and beliefs. Well, we don't, they, they essentially, they're basically saying we don't believe in those anymore. They don't work. They just don't work. And that's the sad, that's the sad part that we live in. You, 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 you kind of feel so discouraged that most people today uh, are no longer wanting to hold to the, to the Orthodox uh, Catholic faith. They just want to just abandon it and rewrite everything because they feel for some reason that Catholicism, Christianity just doesn't work anymore. We got to, we got to, we got to, it's almost like I said in my last video, the people at Bud Light or Budweiser, you know, Anheuser-Busch, you know, this brand doesn't sell anymore. So we've got to find new ways of, of selling our product. We have to rebrand. And unfortunately that, um, that just doesn't work. Um, but what, what needs to happen are good people who are knowledgeable, who are compassionate and who are willing to, you know, uh, maybe kind of take a risk and get out there and, and promote the, the, the genuine faith and, and not be afraid, you know, be positive, be loving, um, and, and not let all of these scary things upsetting things, you know, uh, cloud our, our belief, our ultimate belief that Jesus, of course, as we celebrate in this wonderful Easter season, is risen. Truly, he is risen. Alleluia. And again, what he does is he takes these poor, broken, weak, traumatized people, and eventually what he's going to do, and he's already doing it in this process of these 40 to 50 days before Pentecost, is he's, he's transforming them. He's uh, building up their faith. He's helping them to, to recognize the good things that are happening. Even if he has to be a little more patient, uh, like he is with Cleopas and his companions, and kind of like, okay, he's going to listen to them. But then he's, uh, then he's going to take them from their, their misconceptions and enlighten them. He's going to reveal himself to them in the most powerful way, which is, again, the, the opening up of the scriptures and uh, the breaking of the bread. So those two, those two things are what uh, Christians have always um, adhered to to sustain them through those dark, uh, difficult times. And um, I just wanted to say, I, I, I know I probably talk a little bit, you're like, well, why are you, why are you, why are you promoting this doctor? And again, I'm not really promoting Dr. this Anthony person Todd as an individual, but I like the fact that they have so much, um, they have and such a positive um, energy uh, about them. And what they, the what they want to do is, is they want everybody to realize that, about. you know, healing is, often is something that is from this. within, you know, it's, you it is more of a spiritual thing. Now, I don't think Dr. Kavei actually uses, he actually uses the word sacred every now and then. He uses the word sacred, which is kind of interesting. Um, I find that interesting. I mean, it may be a little bit of a, I don't know, <laughs> again, if he's, a, if he's a Christian or not, but sometimes he says certain things and the, and it's the way he says it. And it's the, the conviction, he has this great conviction, this positive conviction, that, that real healing, it's more than just medicine, you know? And I think in many ways, that's the way I want to, I, I see that our faith, it's not just, it's not just theology, it's not just having, you know, a right understanding of even the scriptures, but it goes much deeper than that. You know, God wants to, to really heal us from within. And, and I really believe that. And I believe that's what the whole message of, of salvation is about. It's about healing us broken sinners who have been wounded and damaged by sin and death and bringing us this, this healing that only he can uh, bring about within us. And it's more than just a political understanding. It's more than just a psychological or political understanding, you know, because that's where the kind of the disciples were in the beginning. They were looking at the Jesus event 
as something more political, you know, to set them free from the oppression of the politics that they were experiencing in their day. And, and that's very similar to where we're at today too. We have, we are kind of, if you are in the sights of our political adversaries, there are people that would love, and they've already tried to do it, have they not? You know, when we talk about, you know, just the, the, the ridiculousness of the COVID thing, how they, they, they tried to shut down the churches. And t sad to say, some of our leaders kind of went along and said, okay, yeah, we'll close the churches. We'll be happy to do that, you know. Um, but we'll leave the marijuana dispensaries and the strip clubs and the uh, uh, liquor stores open because those are essential, right? Okay. So again, uh, but I think, and one of the other things I think about Dr. Anthony Covey is that I think that he's not afraid to talk to his colleagues and disagree with them and say, no, you're not practicing real medicine, you're practicing pharmacology or you're practicing, you know, just basic surgery, right? We, we've, got to, we've got to have a holistic understanding of how to help this person find their healing, okay? Because essentially it's, it's God that does the healing. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, the doctor can be trained to, to help in certain therapies and again, surgeries and prescribing certain medicines, but, but ultimately the real healing is, is something that even, even they say, if they're honest, we don't really know what happens here or how it happens. We just know that it does happen when these certain things kind of line up. So, and so again, you know, looking back on the resurrection experience of Jesus, you know, most of them had no clue, even Jesus, and Jesus told them, this is the thing. He, he told them before it was going to happen that the Messiah had to suffer and die. He said that over and over again, and it went in one ear and it went out the other. And when it happened, they missed it, you know? And in and, and so many ways, you know, this, is a, this, this Cleopas story is, is a story for us because sometimes we are slow to see and understand. And again, I think the basic understanding uh, is that we really don't know what happens next. And the important thing is, because we, we don't know, we can't figure it out. It's not like a Rubik's cube where we can kind of, okay, I kind of figure this out. Or a puzzle or a, or a math equation, I can figure it out. No, basically what you have to do is just keep your eyes focused on Jesus. You have to have your ears attuned to his, his, his word, you know. And, and when he shows up, then you won't miss him, okay? So... I think that's the message of Cleopas and his companions is that, um, you know, to be open, you know, uh, the thing was that they invited Jesus to just stay with them. They just wanted to be in his presence. And I think that that's not a bad place to be, you know, to be in the presence of the Lord. Okay. So whether you do that uh, on a daily basis, you go before the blessed sacrament, you spend time in, in, in God's word, you, you read the, the readings for the day, the mass or the weekend, or you meditate upon and pray upon that. You know, those are the things that I think are going to bring about real uh, fruit, real healing in our lives. But trying to kind of figure out the political landscape, trying to figure out, you know, what comes next, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, it's I'm not saying don't be un unintelligent about these things, but there comes a point where we are very limited at the end of the day. We really are. I think that helps to understand that. And if we understand our limitations, then we kind of then can rest more in the confidence that God really is in control. <laughs> yeah, he's in control for sure. We may not, not so much us, but, but definitely God is in control. And it's just like, you know, with Jesus appearing to the, these disciples, they, they were able to recognize him where it really mattered, finally, finally. And then, of course, then he's taken from them again. And now they're, they're going to be, they go back and they make their report. But, but again, the mystery of where the Lord is going next, well, we just don't know. But if we try to, if we try to you know, keep our eyes fixed and our ears attuned to him, I think that's the best way, that's the best that we can do. And I think that's the message of Easter is to just kind of be patient and wait on the Lord and wherever he leads us, we follow. Well, I hope you got something out of it this day. I'm going to see if this video worked or not. God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ is risen. 
truly he is risen. Alleluia.